Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me back here in the Fire Rises mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Joe Biden Lover, or <clears throat> well, America Lover, but we gotta talk about the siege because it's cancelled. After further investigation by the FBI, the planned White House siege has been cancelled. The news comes as the movement was unable to gain enough traction. Subsequently, ending in a lack of volunteers and participation before the beginning stages of the siege began. Many members of the movement who did show up have stated that the lack of participants was caused by political silencing and media suppression, a total failure. Patriot Front March in Philadelphia. People really say scores of members of a group described by the ADL as white uh, supremists marched in Philadelphia over the weekend, clashing with pedestrians and setting up what were believed to be smoke bombs at one point. The group of Patriot Front members, estimated to be 450 to 500 people, marched for several blocks in Center City on Saturday evening wearing tan pants and black shirts with face coverings and carrying shields and flags. Police said they were chanting slogans such as Reclaim America and Death to the Zionist State. Police said pedestrians engaged in members, uh, engaged members of a group verbally, and there were several physical encounters. Finally, someone from the group used what police believed were smoke bombs to cover the retreat as they fled, police said. Several onlookers began yelling at the group and banging on trucks as they loaded their, to their vehicles and drove off. Police didn't announce any arrests and said there were no reports of any damage or injuries during the march. Troubling. The Green Mountain Anarchist Re uh, Reform Collective. The Green Mountain Anarchist Collective was founded by David Van Dusen. Xavier Massett, Johnny Bidnett, and Natasha Valine. The first generation of collective came together shortly after the 1999 Seattle World Trade Organization protests. It was greatly influenced uh, by the Situationist International, Vermont's militant anti-colonial history, and libertarian socialism. Often working with the Vermont Workers' Center, organized labor, mass organizations, GMAC, prioritized projects that built up directly democratic expression through the creation of grassroots counter institutions. Though, though disbanding in 2005, the recent turmoil, former leader uh, David Van Dusen announced that the collective would be reforming in northern Vermont, which started in the former newspaper Catamount Tavern News, as well as starting tra uh, training camps for self defense against the fascist menace. Anarchists here absurd and growth in cascading identity. There's unparalleled beauty in the United States other than the Pacific Northwest. From Portland to Seattle, the rolling hills of forests of Cascadia represents the last unexploited natural resources or areas of the U.S. Yet not all is well. Companies pouring in from California have attempted to ruin the picturesque landscape that is Cascadia. Cities in the Northwest are fraught with property, ruin and conflict, and with radical groups firing upon each other in the streets of Portland, and income inequality soaring in the city of Seattle. While the local populace suffer, the robber barons in Washington are raking more and more money off the sweat and blood of the Cascadian worker. As a response, the rise in Cascadian identities in Gulf regions. Rather than seeing themselves as Americans, Washingtonians, or Oregonians, pro independent Cascadian groups have been successful at promoting unified Cascadian identity, with more and more seeing themselves as Cascadians in Portland. Several local politicians belonging to a socialist alternative have formed the Cascadian Socialist Party, promoting an eco-socialist model focused on the preservation of nature. In the Idaho Panhandle, the right has been able to recruit among farmers and rural populace, promoting the idea of the Northwest Territorial Imperative and eco-fascism, the development of the ethnostate which will return Cascadia to its rural roots. While there is a deep hatred between the two radicals of Cascadia, a mutual unspoken agreement has formed to promote the creation of the Cascadian state. While violent revolution for freedom is seemingly far away, the rise of the Cascadian identity is undoubtedly a sign of a dying nation. An odd bunch of extremists, but we're still here in the Middle East. As per normal, this is America we're talking about. We got a month until elections, and I guess it's, it is what it is. But we're gonna do whatever we can to squash these little bugs here. And we got flames of the future. As America burns, we'll see the flames of the future, a future purified from the sins of the past. As we are going to fuel the machine. What else can we do here? I forget. I'm not gonna lie. It's been a day or two since I've actually played this, so. Uh, so supporting Joe Biden, uh, minor lockdowns, eh, fund the movement. Well, protests being organized. So where are we at with this? We are 13%. We've got high approval, and we're going to fund the media. So we get even more approval. Protest the government, 2% of opposition taking action. We can help balance it out. Humiliate the opposition. We can wait to get that one next. Give it a day or so. But it needs stability. Humiliate the opposition. That'd be great. We'll I've got some comments to go through and whatnot, and, and then we'll finish. And get a lot of things done and accomplished. But you guys can go there, that's fine. It's a little difficult. Nice, we're wrapping them up. Uh, attacks in France and Austria, if you worry about that, please go ahead. Oh, increase in southwestern separatism. With ethnic conflict recently shaking the United States and multiple cities, engaging in open rioting, there's been a reported drastic rise in separatist thought in the American Southwest, especially among Hispanics. Recent Pew Research polling shows that nearly 15% of Hispanics now support the creation of a separatist state in the Southwest, wishing to separate itself from the violence of madness that has consumed the rest of the nation. Um, supporters of separatism have stated that the federal government in Washington, D.C. have ignored the economic and social situation of the South, which is probably not very surprising, truth be told. 
The most notable faction among the separatists are the Brown Berets, a pro-Chicano paramilitary organization that emerged during the Chicano movement in the late 60s has now been revived thanks to the turmoil in the states. The Brown Berets are notable for their stance on educational reform, farm workers' rights, and rights against uh, police brutality, and opposition against foreign intervention. Especially notable for their visible paramilitary presence, many have joined the ranks for sense of community among the large migrant population. The Brown Berets have been arming and training young radicals, some that drawn immense controversy. While the Brown Berets have defended their actions in the name of the community defense, many are worried that their activities constitute terrorism. Observe, serve, observe, and protect. Nah, let's get these guys done. Good job, guys. So now, with these guys rising up here, the old Royal Arabs, these guys, Saudi Civil War, heirs uh, to Mohammed, I think we'll save them for last. Let's get rid of everyone else first. I love intervening in the Middle East. Um, I'm not let them kill themselves here. Let's focus on these t this top group here. So what we're going to do is this. You do this, and you're going to go this direction. Um, I'm going to feel the machine and a couple comments though. Uh, green economics that would be nice. Silence a tyrant. Trump's power comes from his ability to mobilize massive amounts of Americans through his inflammatory statements on social media. By silencing, we can pull out the rug from under the support. Some comments include: Welcome to the good old USA. Since you're going with Joe Biden. Do the same path. We eventually restore the U.S. and do the uh, later cursed path. So I guess we have two paths with Joe Biden because I know nothing about this. So it says, I can't figure out how to raise congressional support. We'll figure that out too. We can't get anything done. But that's okay right now. Someone says, we're beating corn pop with, with this one. Someone says, is it possible you can make Trump win the presidency? Yes, and I will play as Trump eventually. And someone says, a, n a new update for the Fire Rises mod at the time of this recording is going to come out soon. Include the Black Liberation Army, Jewish Defense League, Cascadia, another nation. Um, someone says, get ready for the unending stalemate. Build a reserve against the Patriot Front. Someone says, I hope you're going for the American Caligula. Someone says, born too early to fight in the Middle East. Born too late in the fight, to fight in the Middle East. Born just right in time to fight in the Middle East. Someone says, says please pick the constitutional revisionism focus. Uh, someone else wants me to do, quite a few people want me to do the curse Biden path, so. And says, someone else says, and there's a lot of support for this one. Do not grant emergency power to Biden after you defeat Trump and keep Biden sane. Bill de Blasio assassinated. Who would want to kill this guy? Unless the development political chaos and instability in the U.S., New York City Mayor and former Democratic primary candidate Bill de Blasio shot dead by an unknown assailant dressed in all black, who yelled death to the American state before disappearing. Oh, look at that. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's, that's not good. Um, uh, after the shooting. While well, the NYPD has launched a statewide manhunt, there is very little hope that the assailant will be caught. Meanwhile, there is mass speculation on the shooter's motivation. Due to the general popular nature of de Blasio, figures have been pointed in all directions. The left claims the Patriot Front group committed the attacks, adding recent PF organizations in and around New England area. On the other hand, the right has pointed their fingers at Antifa, claiming the slogan Death to American State sounds extremely anarchistic. Yet some far-left groups blame the Achenbotham division, claiming only a group as insane as them would go as far as kill a major politician in the end, which blame blame on. Let's see. Well, who's got the least support? Probably the National Socialists. Elections near. The year election, year's been Quite the test for President Trump. The outcome of the election will be decided in the nation's future and serves as a referendum on the president's populist platform. Come on, let's go with the Joe. So I guess we lost here, which kind of sucks. Which, whatever. Honestly, we're going to make Trump look bad in this one, so it doesn't matter in the end. You get volunteers from everyone else that we know. You want volunteer? Well, once we get the volunteers back. Oh, naval stuff. It really doesn't matter in the end, though. Purchase masks. Oh man, I'm gonna vote for Joe, right? So there you go. You vote for Joe in this one. Weekly mass gain. Don't worry about the economy. Not looking good, but that's okay. That's pretty normal. Feel the machine. Wow, we're at 27%. Holy cow. That's pretty high approval, not gonna lie. Oh, 2020 elections, delays. Just as the last presidential election, the election results have taken ages to count. Unlike the last election, however, the count has taken so long that most of the ballot candidates have already gone to bed. So far, though, Joe Biden and Donald Trump seem to be in equilibrium, with most media outlets projecting a Biden victory. Give me a break, delays are normal. Um, bro. You know what they're doing. Ah, welcome back. Capitol Hill. Tunnel says, says support. Now. Yeah. It is what it is. Alright, we were actively fighting you last time, but you, would you like some help? Yeah, if you send one more too. Whee! Ballot meddling. 
Video from the anonymous sources surfaced showing trucks outside a Georgia voting poll unloading bags of ballots and wheeling them out of the building out of the polls that closed for the counting at 4 a.m. Others on social media are claiming that they have seen similar trucks and people unloading ballots into polls a few hours after the polls are closed all across the country, with the media and the Democrats fervently denying any allegations, with Joe Biden seemingly in the electoral lead, regardless of the truth, the public is starting to lose faith in the system. The most secure election ever. Well, isn't that the truth? I wonder if I'm going to get anything at the bottom of this uh, video saying election security, fraud, meddling, something like that. I don't know. Anything could go happen. happen. Oh... Well, we're just here to bomb people in the Middle East. That's all that matters. Good economics. Oh, we got quite a bit of political power. Third Congo War? Well, there goes the Congo. Bye, Congo. What do we really do with this amount of political power? Not really. I guess we can do stuff here, maybe. Fuel the machine? Oh. Fortify the election. If we don't have at least 60% approval rating by the time votes counted, it would drop disastrous consequences. Oh. Political sabotage. Countdown day. We will certify a presidential candidate. Opposition taking action. Prolong the impeachment. Fuel the machine. Sure, why not? Oh, whoops. Well, we should fortify the election first. How long does that take? 28 days. 28 days. Uh. Oh, 30... 10%. Well, maybe I made a mistake. Oh, media calls for Joe. 2020 elections. It's official. Several large media outlets have called the race for Joe Biden as several states have seemingly completely flipped from an increasingly large edge over Biden on election night to a close call race for Joe in many swing states. With the claims about meddling increasingly becoming center stage in the political debates on the election night, Many are beginning to abandon the media, even some of which have favored Trump in the past. Out of the Trump campaign, the GOP and independents already begun legal proceedings in several states to contest election results that the states have announced. Good call. Well, what do you expect? Are we supposed to have faith in our elections? I'm too cynical for anything like this at this point in my life. C'est la vie. It is what it is. Uh, be offensive. Trump holds rally. Despite warning against large social gatherings and self-proclaimed resistance, President Trump held a rally to make sure his base and fellow Republicans would know that he would keep fighting to gain a second term and expose the never Trumpers who used Trump for political gain. What a loser. On the movement. Tenth Thanksgiving, the turkey is the centerpiece of every American holiday, or every Thanksgiving. As a staple food of the Hartford's this time of year. But 2020 was different. Today's food was taken, uh, take a meal, take away meal from a nearby McDonald's that was all they could afford in terms of time and money. Well, Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. The mother whispered, desperately trying to crack a smile. The rest of the table mumbled their thanks, began the feast. Stacy, please pass the salt. The brother demanded, however, the sister refused to respond. Stacy, if you're going to be mad about yesterday, then you were. You call me, call me, bitch. Jason, you refuse to say sorry. Now you want me to do what you want me to do? What you want? Stacy, snap. You are truly despicable. Well, am I wrong? Aren't you the one who filled the entirety of your room with pictures of her? Jason replied. Aren't you the one who constantly bitches about the exploitation of the proletariat? Aren't they aren't even exploited. Why are you stuck with this dead ideology? Oh, she start chanting about white supremacy. Then she hissed back. You spell this nonsense day and day now. Am I the one who's bitching? How about you go and burn another gay pride flag? Maybe we can. And not the father demanded, bringing his hand to the table. The judge tried to object. They both know they didn't want to see their father's fury. They both unwillingly retreated to the rooms, leaving their parents alone. The American family would never be the same. It's all right. We just gotta have a civil war first. And whoever happens, happens. Yeah, I should have done a protest government for prolonged impeachment. I fortified the election. We should have done this one. Not bad. I should not choose in this one. Wisconsin papers leak. A bombshell report was released this morning from an anonymous DNC whistleblower that highlighted how the Biden campaign New England persuaded the DNC to purge tens of thousands of voters, disproportionately people of color, on the rolls for offenses as trivial as misplaced hyphen in a name in order to disadvantage British Sanders. In addition, leaked records showing how the Biden campaign lobbied top DNC officials to close voter polls in areas with high support for Sanders in order to decrease turnout. 
Other files show how delegates were bribed by the Biden campaign to switch their votes at the last minute to get the edge to Biden. The Democratic Party stands reeling from this irrelevant violation as progressives demand for Biden to be disqualified. The DNC leadership and Biden denounce all accusations as baseless lies and the challenge was the blower to come forward. They maintain that Biden will continue on as a nominee. Lies, slander. It's getting ridiculous. Ah, oh, Texas case thrown out. With well, the rapid developments in the justice system regarding the Trump campaign and looming deadline to submit challenges, it became increasingly clear that the matter would reach the Supreme Court. The state of Texas filed a lawsuit with the Supreme Court against four swing states that appear to have voted for Biden, arguing that these states unconstitutionally changed their election laws prior to the election and, therefore, their votes should not be counted. Texas claims a standing in the case, stating that the election results would affect the Senate, with the vice president serving as the tiebreaker, and the Senate meant to uh, represent the states. The lawsuit gained support from 17 other states and over 120 House of Representatives. However, despite this justification, the Supreme Court ruled 7 to 2 not to hear the case, stating that Texas had no standing to sue. This decision has sparked outrage among many few other day in court not yet come, viewing the ruling as a way for the court to avoid making a significant decision. With the legal avenues now exhausted, President Trump has called on the GOP to object to the election results on January 6th and account the alternate GOP electors from several disputed states. The justice system maintains neutrality. Well, it's, it's a mess. Protests break out of the Wisconsin papers. Across the nation, leftists and progressives take to the streets to protest, which after times escalate to outright vote rioting in regards to the resu results of the 2020 Democratic primary and new findings about voter suppression and manipulation in the favor of Democratic candidate Joe Biden. In Manhattan, New York City, and the local Democratic Party headquarters was besieged by protesters demanding answers. In Portland, Governor Kate Brown called the National Guard to lock out lo National Guard out to lock down the city as most protests began to spiral out of control. Despite all the commotion, many were quick to point out the futility of protesting as both the primary and general election, presidential election, have concluded, and with the winner declared. That was led to the rise of pessimism among America's left and dissatisfaction for American electoralism, as it is again and again sidelines left wing politicians. A notable and very allegorical quote from the Twitter.com user sums up the mood if this is what electoralism is like, then I'm pretty frickin' tired of electoralism. What's the alternative? The GOP collapses. Oh, there you go. Purchase masks. Oh, 137. Wow. With the media calling for the election of Joe Biden, their seat is secure, and the Texas lawsuit are thrown out. Many GOP members have distanced themselves from President Trump. Bill and true stance to the American people. In response, Trump supporters across the country are outraged and have begun to lead the GOP in large numbers, with some calling for Trump to create a new political party. Calls have also intensified for Georgia. Uh, Trump supporters have abstained from voting in the Senate runoff elections, aiming to weaken the established GOP enforcement aligned with Trump and his efforts to challenge the election results on January 6. Notable Trump supporting activists have started organizing a protest for that same date, pressure Congress in supporting alternate electors, with the president himself giving them an endorsement, telling his followers, Be there, we'll be wild. Oh, there you go. This is my bad. So, what if I don't have this much? Judge rules DNC has right to pick candidates in back rooms. Uh oh. The transcript was released from the most recent hearing of a federal court in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, on the lawsuit filed on behalf of Bernie Sanders to support against the Democratic National Committee and former DNC chair Debbie Wasserman Schultz for rigging the Democratic primaries for Joseph Biden. Shortly into the hearing, DNC attorneys claim Article 5, Section 4 of the DNC chapter. Our charter, stipulating that the DNC chair and their staff must ensure neutrality in the Democratic presidential primaries as a discretionary rule that didn't need to be adopted to, to begin with. Based on this assumption, DNC attorneys assert that the court cannot interpret claim or rule on anything associated with whether the DNC remains neutral in the presidential primaries. The attorneys representing the DNC have previously argued that Sanders supporters knew the primaries were rigged before annulling any potential accountability the DNC may have. On the latest hearing, they doubled down on this argument. The court would have to find that people who fervently supported Bernie Sanders, who purportedly didn't know that this favoritism was going on, would have not given a Mr. Sanders to Senator Sanders if they'd known that there was this purported favoritism. Uh, later in the hearing, attorneys. Representative of the DNC claimed that the Democratic National Committee would be well within the right to go into the back rooms, like they used to and smoke cigars and pick the candidates at late. While pushing an argument through the proceedings of this class action lawsuit, the Democratic National Committee is telling voters in a court of law that they see no enforceable obligation in having to run a fair and impartial primary election. The DNC attorneys even go so far as to argue that the words impartial and even-handed using the DNC charter can't be interpreted by a court of law. The judge ended the hearing by stating to both parties that he would issue a written order on the DNC's motion to dismiss the lawsuit. Democracy dies in darkness. Thank you, Washington Post. Picture of front marches in D.C. 
I'm sending you a display of force. The far right, Patriot Front, is staged a march featuring over a thousand of their members in the heart of the nation's capital. Chatting Reclaim America videos showing the members of Patriot Front outside the Lincoln Memorial, wearing matching outfits of khaki pants, dark blue jackets, and baseball caps. Some carry flags, show them photographs showing one banner reading victory or death. Their faces were obscured mainly by sunglasses and white coverings around their nose and mouths. Mouth. The group leader, Thomas Rousseau, given a speech near the Capitol reflecting pool in front of thousands, our demonstrations are an exhibition of our uni unified capability to organize to show our strength. Rousseau said, Not as brawlers or public nuisances, but as men capable of illustrating a message and seeking in America that more closely resembles the interests of its true people. Although the march was met with a large amount of counter protesters, those were able to keep the two groups separate and no violence occurred. Extremism in the heart of a nation. Back up more masks. And see. Ah, New Hampshire? Sure. And they're pretty much is affecting every state at this point. Barbara Lee joins PSL. Longtime Democrat and African American representative, Barbara Lee, has left the Democratic Party following the release of the bombshell Wisconsin Papers. Saying a long running problem with the upper leadership in the swampish political establishment, Representative Lee has stated that the Democratic Party's uh, concerted. Uh, concentrated effort on the suppression of black voices is too much to handle. Uh, Representative Lee has opted to join the ranks of the Party of Socialism and Labor, which she says will pave the way to break the two-party duopoly and bring freedom to those oppressed by the tyranny of the American uh, regime. The radical left shows the true colors. Do How many more days do we have? Countdown day. Too many counting hands. If not, we will certify a presidential candidate. Uh. Well, whoops. Oh wait, oh we can still do this one I guess. Protest the government. My bad. We'll see. So what happens if we don't get this one done? Oh. Biden declares victory in the US presidential election. Oh, what comes up? Oh, well, we got out of here. Trump fires Secretary of Defense. I tweet that many stunned. Donald Trump wrote in a tweet that Secretary of Defense Mark Esper has been terminated and replaced by Chris C. Miller, the director of the National Counterterrorism Center. Uh, sources say Esper already had a resignation letter ready to go because Trump threatened to fire him in June over disagreement about using active duty troops to quell street protests and had recently updated it. After it was clear Trump was ready to fire him, Esper kept a low profile, rarely talking to reporters and going on trips to Africa and India and appearing in her recent weeks before friendly think tanks where few tough questions would be asked. Esper is a former Army Secretary, and Raytheon Executive took over the job in July of last year from the retired Marine General Jim Mattis, who abruptly resigned over efforts by Trump to quickly reduce troops in Syria. Esper earned the derogatory term Yesper for seemingly acquiescing or remaining silent over the President's knee-jerk moves. Those range from reducing U.S. troops in Afghanistan and Syria, with little or no deliberation of stopping Pentagon efforts to rename military bases named after Confederate generals. Troubling times ahead. Flynn comes out of retirement. Michael Flynn, former National Security Advisor for Trump Administration, has been recalled from retirement by the President following an abrupt pardon by the President on November 25th. The National Security Advisor has been held up in court for over three years under the charge of assisting foreign agents, specifically Turkish and Russian foreign agents. However, after having cooperated with investigations into these channels and what seemed to be an unfair holding of Flynn in court, President Trump issued a presidential pardon for him, freeing him of judicial quagmire. Months prior, Flynn had pledged an oath to the QAnon theory holding its accusations against what it considered to be Democrat malefactors as true. As the loyalty to the current president displayed it as very much intact. With President Trump potentially losing his re election, Flynn reportedly advised the president to declare martial law, suspend the Constitution, and rerun the election. Though Trump has denied this accusation, he stirred up mass chaos with his resigning as National Security Advisor under the supposedly exiting administration. The world watches with bated breath as Trump's next move made a sad the fate of the nation. Carpe diem. Biden has been certified president. With one of the most intense political environments in the U.S. history driving the nation into this election, Donald Trump and Joe Biden face off against each other in this presidential election. Despite the Michigan incident and multiple other accounts of votes simply appearing in mid-air to be counted in favor of the Democratic Party, Joe Biden has finally, after much conjecture, been certified as elector and U.S. president-elect by the Electoral College. Our celebrations broken up by violent clashes, with the nation reigning in chaos thanks to the tumultuous nature of this election. Should Biden become president as mandated, we'll have to contend with a nation that wants nothing more than the extremes of, of that which he himself is purportedly against. As supporters united and around him by the sole factor of not him not being Donald Trump, and should he not carry out the extreme policies that were necessary to gather the movement on his side and support may dissipate. Meanwhile, Donald Trump, still holding presidential power for another two weeks, has a cry of the electoral results as false, saying that he intends to carry a case of the Supreme Court against the Democratic Party for electoral fraud in the face of multiple shaky state victories for the Democratic Party. Can't wait to see what this happens. Uh, 
Some fear that the current president may resort to more drastic measures if the election is not rerun. With Michael Flynn and other figures connected to QAnon reportedly being called for a meeting in the White House as soon as possible. We did it. Point of no return. Now what do you expect? Are we supposed to have faith in our elections? It is what it is. Ah. Um, let's see how long we have this group here. But there you go. The Berkeley Massacre. Shots ringing out across UC Berkeley at campuses earlier today as National Guard units clashed with student protesters. Stories of what truly happened range wildly, the National Guard claiming that the stones the stones were thrown at the soldiers first, while students activists claimed that the soldiers shot first. With photos shared all across social media invoking the same imagery as the Kent State Massacre more than 50 years earlier, the nation sent in horrors pictures of the lifeless bodies of students bleeding out onto the pavement. Candlelight vigils were held in the late evenings as the families of the victims called forth for justice and accountability from both the Trump administration and the National Guard. The tragedy drawn widespread condemnation for both the right, left, and center. The Trump administration has yet, as of yet, not released a press statement. Horrifying. What did Trump have to do with that? Be responsible for yourself, man. Let's see how things all end up in the end. Yeah, 48 percent. The inauguration of Joe, Joe, Joe Biden. Joe Biden stood in the White House Situation Room, flanked by Jill Kamala and loyal congressmen and those in front, those in the Joint Chiefs who say true to America. <clears throat> On civil shaking, Chief Justice Roberts, so unnerved by the past few days' events, was officiating the ad hoc ceremony. Placing his right hand in the family Bible, Biden repeated the oath I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the offices of President of the United States and will do the best of my abilities to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the U.S., so help me God. The room echoed with applause as a lucky few journalists allowed him to snap photographs for the historic moment. But it was historic for all the wrong reasons. Halfway across the country, jo Donald Trump was holed up with traitorous elements of the military, secretly taking the same oath, and claiming an offset he had, according to the government, fairly lost. They were on a collision course, and neither of them were willing to step out of the way. There's no going back now. They'll start counting heads. Huh. Political division with national schizophrenia. Nice. What do we got going on here? Build back better. So, with purpose and resolve, we turn to the task of our time, sustained by faith, driven by conviction, and devoted to another, one another, and to this country we love with all our hearts. Stop the spread, talk with moderates. So, what we got here? This doesn't change. Democrats lost in there. Oh, two independents, look at that. Ah, counting heads. This is it, the time the great crisis has arrived in America, and there's no way to turn back. We must secure loyalties from different factions within the Union, or to save the nation, for if we fail, America will cease to exist. The inevitable civil war. Propaganda. Gain legitimacy. Hold a conference. At least 5%. Fighting coronavirus. Deal with the movement. So, right now, we got uh, the middleman, Sleepy Joe. Political sabotage. Well, we want high approval as much as we possibly can. Um, Brian, you can have a couple masks in Tennessee, I guess. Do anything here? No. We're going to build back better. What else we got? Promise progress. The American People's Liberation Army forms. Following the devastating release of the Wisconsin Papers, the Party of Socialism and Labor have announced that it will form the Community Self-Defense Forces, organized into what is now called the American People's Liberation Army, or the APLA. With increasing lack in faith in both the American electoral system, following the Wisconsin Papers, and later judge rulings, as well as economic fall and continued failures of the Washington leadership to address even the most basic of issues, such as health care, thousands of people were seen training with the APLA along the West Coast. While the APLA is registered as an official militia with no goal of violence other than self-defense, opposed have called it a blatant insurrection group. How worrying. Unify the Democratic Party. Reconcile Republicans. Compromise with Republicans. Mitt Romney, huh? Minimize militias. Expand the lockdowns. Mandate the mask. Empower the government. Address the infrastructure. Well, let's see. Store guns. 
American constitutional government. Minimize militias. That's not bad. You get some legitimacy too, which I do like. I wouldn't mind a little bit of stability though. But then again, we have so little, it doesn't even matter at this point. Weekly change goes down by 22 anyways. Um, Arkansas Republicans, with the majority of the Republicans are swayed by the maniac Trump. There are some Republicans who are sticking to the true legitimate government as the party of Lincoln has to ensure the brutal spirit or brutal split between the remaining loyalists and the traitorous maggot cultists that oppress us for four to five years. Far left militias form in California, Oregon. Informants have gathered reliable information from the creation of multiple Marxist, Leninists, and anarchist militias in the state of California and Oregon. Possible organizers of these militias have been theorized to be Gloria La Riva of the Party for Socialism and Liberation. PSL members have been demonstrating in Sacramento, Berkeley, San Francisco, and Monterey. More and more armed individuals have been showing up to each consecutive protest. PSL posts on social media boast their increasing membership. Proposed purported members have showcased weapon training. Events for mass training have also been conducted in undisclosed locations. These events gather well over a few dozen people. California State Police have marked these groups as potential high risk of national security. Gloria La Riva's location has been unknown for several months. Charlie's in the woods. Um, you know what? Actually, I want to move lockdown economy, expand lockdowns, mandate the mask. Just straight up remove it. You lose political power to get more stability. Or mandate the mask. The public must be reminded that the virus can hit any time, unless they sanitize each time. The lockdowns would not be as harsh as ever. The public needs to wear masks every time they go out to eat, shop, and tour. Unify the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party split through various ideas that might contradict each other. From the progressives to the liberals, it's important for us to unite in those in the current dire times. Uh, mass protests in Russia, Burmese military coup, API raids, far right stronghold. Amidst political extremism following the oil crisis and the COVID 19 pandemic, reports of far right and white supremacist activity have ex exponentially increased. As part of the effort to combat domestic extremism, the FBI has conducted a raid on stronghold of white supremacists in Raleigh, North Carolina. At 2 a.m. EST, federal agents burst into the compound of well known local militia and white supremacist Gary Burns and discovered a mass of illegally modified weapons as well as improvised explosive devices. In a standoff that lasts four hours, federal forces and militia groups exchanged fire, leading to 14 dead militia men as well as three dead federal agents. Burns was arrested on charges of possessions of illegal firearms, manufacturing possession of explosive materials, and first degree murder. This trial set to begin sometime in 2023. Despite the charges, an online trend of hashtag Remember Raleigh has started to go viral, especially among the members of the alt right. The hashtag Remember Raleigh movement accuses the federal government of tyranny and infringement of Mr. Burns' Second Amendment rights. In a political climate that has become increasingly polarized, the Raleigh incident is just more fuel to the fire. The country is crumbling. Mm. I like removing this because we get to use more consumer goods. Let's see. Well, you might be able to use some. If you get 30% back, you get down to 77% of our 342 specifically civilian and military factories. Um, you lose a little bit of political power, but you get this. Or we can modify and gain more masks now, which I think is okay. Let's expand lockdowns. Lockdowns that have been initially stabbed did a little effect to mitigate the spread of the viruses. It's imperative to expand the lockdowns, establish curfews, and quarantine areas. The line we tell, the nation's future will be determined by those who are willing to step up to the plate and sacrifice everything. Thus, we must decide what faction will aid in the possible in the event of the inevitable for democracy. Oh. Oh, look at this. We must reclaim America, Patriot Front. Our time has come, the National Socialist Movement, our plans are complete. This faction is the hardest in the game. Well, we're going to play it for democracy. Or what we think democracy is. Huh. Welcome back from Saudi Arabia, everybody. I'm sure you really enjoyed your time. Uh, press propaganda. Sure, why not? Bombing the New York Stock Exchange? Well, that's not good. The morning, the month after terror and violence to seem, and never seen in the Big Apple since 9-11, has now reached a new high. The New York Stock Exchange was attacked around 10.30, an hour after the opening bell rang a bomb and gone off on the trading floor. Reports suggested up to 27 have been killed, including three of the four perpetrators. Among the dead include CEOs, journalists, traders, police, and security. Approximately two minutes after the bombing, four gunmen rushed onto the floor and began firing shortly after police and security stationed at the exchange began exchanging gunfire, resulting in three perpetrators being killed, including two security guards and one police officer. The New York City Police Chief, Dermot Shea, announced a statewide manhunt with a curfew this afternoon that goes into effect at 7 p.m., along with the announcement of the mobilization of the State National Guard. Governors of both New Jersey and Connecticut announced similar measures. Authorities have not yet commented on the motives or purpose of the attack yet, however, described the surviving aspect or su su surviving suspect as a bald white muscular male in his mid-30s. Witnesses described the man commanding the other assailants with him, also bringing a middle mask with voice changer. Other than the usual far-right, far-left organizations that are blamed for these attacks, 
Other theories claim that it was carried out by disgruntled traders who left in the dust of the recent GameStop short squeeze and trading hall. I remember that. The SEC Chairman Jay Clayton announced that the exchange would be closed for an unspecified amount of time in respect to those who had lost their lives. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell refused comments after the effects of this may have on the economy. Among those that include CNBC host James Jim Cramer, CEO of ARK investor Catherine Wood, and famous trader Pete Tuchman. Has the fire been lit? Oh man. That's pretty bad. The militia stand up in Illinois. In developing news around the hotly contested 2020 election, militia's loyal to Donald Trump have refused to recognize the Biden administration and have engaged in long days, days long, a confrontation with the FBI. Claiming that Joe Biden was a tyrant and socialist who wants to destroy America, the independent Illinois militia patrolled the highway, attempting to disrupt the movement of federal forces across Illinois. When Illinois National Guard, under the directive of J Governor J.B. Pritzker, arrived to remove the militia from the highway, the militia opened fire and engaged with the Illinois National Guard. Although they were quickly overwhelmed by the numerical advantage held by the Illinois National Guard, they were able to claim the lives of 16 guardsmen before eventually laying down their arms. While Joe Biden has condemned the attack as a violent insur insurrectionary attempt, Donald Trump has defended the militia, saying that they were merely exercising their Second Amendment rights to form a militia. While well, the national debate on the militia organization and the election continues, it's clear that the country remains more divided than ever before. The country burns. Biden declares a state of emergency. Following a string of militia attacks have occurred following the confirmation of Joe Biden as the 46th president of the United States, uh, uh, the Biden administration has declared a state of emergency. Biden has stated that the radical right-wing extremists will be put down with any force necessary and present an existential threat to the U.S. Following the decree, the number of federal raids against militia groups has greatly increased. Confrontations between federal forces and militia groups have exponentially increased as federal agencies have attempted to crack down on militancy on the part of the right. When the FBI was questioned on it, they defended the recent initiative as necessary to prevent radicals from overturning the election. While opponents of the declaration decried it as dictatorial and authoritarian, supporters of President Biden stated that such measures are necessary to stop domestic terrorism and restore order to the nation. When will things return to normal? And then a snowstorm hit Texas. As Texas faced record low temperatures in February 2021, and snow and ice made roads impassable, the state's electric grid operator lost control of the power supply, leaving millions without access to electricity. As the blackouts extended from hours to days, it stopped top state lawmakers called for investigations into the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, and Texans demanded accountability for the disaster. During the po power grid crisis, all sorts of electricity struggled during the frigid temperatures. Transmission companies inadvertently cut power to parts of the natural gas supply chain when ERCOT ordered the utilities to reduce power demand or risk further damage to the grid. That decision aggravated the problem as natural gas producers were unable to deliver enough fuel to the power plants. At the same time, some wells were unable to produce as much natural gas due to the freezing conditions overall. There are too many confirmed casualties because of the snowstorm. Republican incompetence strikes again. Militia forced to seize Springfield, Missouri. The nation draws closer and closer to civil war as Missouri-based militia has announced the capture of the Springfield. The militia declared that despite the currently contested status of the 2020 election, that the Democratic Party was attempting a coup and that Donald Trump was a rightful victor of the election. Not wanting to risk a bloodbath like what happened in the other states, the Missouri governor instructed troops to not engage and to withdraw from the city. Upon the capture of the city, the militia declared that until Donald Trump was declared the uncontested president of the United States, they would remain under martial law. Hoping to inspire other militias and the state to do the same, militia leader Jared Abrams called upon patriots to fight like their ancestors before the, uh, to overthrow tyranny and restore rule of law to this great land. While the Biden government has yet to com um, comment on this matter, it's clear that there are no turning back now. As brother faces off against brother, a deadly civil war seems all but inevitable. What have we done? We showed up. I'm not sure there's really much else we can really throw on here. Yeah. Blinken. Social liberal. Smiling serpent. <laughs> At Kamala. Vaccine convoy intercepted by militia. At approximately 11 a.m. EST, a FEMA a convoy delivering vaccines in underdeveloped and rural areas intercepted by five trucks and 32 militiamen. The front vehicle of the convoy attempted to circumnavigate the first truck but couldn't as the trucks would drive rapidly and surround the short convoy. The militiamen would get out of the vehicles and yell political slogans such as Make America Great Again and Take the Country Back, along with other profanities thrown in. A fight with one of the convoy drivers erupted five minutes later as a 23 year old named Jacob Bakers came out of this convoy truck and attempted to aggressively confront one of the militiamen but got punched and kicked to the ground. Chaos would ensue as almost all convoy drivers came out of their respective vehicles to aid Mr. Bakers, which dropped into a brawl between the two sides. One of them, the suspect is unknown, fired 13 shots into the group of convoy drivers, injuring eight and killing one. It was reported that they ran by foot, being chased until the militiamen gave up. The fate of the vaccines and convoy trucks left behind is currently unknown. How troubling. Less than 15 states have coronavirus. That's your weekly stability, yeah. Look, text him. Nope, it is what it is.
We're gonna expand the lockdowns. Empower the government. Look at that. We must do anything to curb the rise of radicalism and partisanship in politics, even by questionable means. Oh, deploy vaccines. Oh, yeah, vaccines now. Where do you can see vaccines? Deploy vaccines in Nebraska. Oh, we can do this stuff too. 7%. Press propaganda. Talk with moderates. Oh, we're still losing weekly stability? Yeah. Leave that one. Oh, so for instead of vaccines, we need masks. Buy a crap in masks, I guess. Have to coup in the Republic of the Congo. Purchase a couple more masks. West Virginia. Oh, well, let's do Ohio then. Texas and family killed in a standoff. Paramedics and firefighters searched the rubble of a rural home in western Texas. The home belonged to an Air Force colonel living with his wife and two kids outside the city of Van Horn. U.S. Air Base 18 reported Colonel Craig Brown had failed to report to the Air Base for several weeks. Officers were sent to the home to find it had been boarded up with a few holes in the windows for sunlight to shine through. Friends reached Craig through phone and reported that he was in distress and claimed he was protecting his wife and kids and not believing his home. Hearing of a possible hostage situation, the local SWAT and police arrived the following day and attempted the negotiations with Craig for the removal of his family. After several hours of failure, officers approached the home and were met with gunfire. SWAT teams moved in and prepared to breach through all sides of the home, upon which Craig detonated a homemade bomb destroying much of the home. Six officers were wounded throughout the idea ordeal, and paramedics recovered the bodies of Craig and his family. Critics on social media were quick to denounce Craig's actions and call for the abolishment of the Second Amendment. A terrible tragedy. We need to fight the Democratic Party. We expand lockdowns. We'll purchase more masks, I guess. Weekly mass production gain. I don't think it really matters too much, but you know. Whatever. Hold a conference. Oh, we're still in the oil crisis. To the moon! Financial markets are in turmoil today as the value of GameStop has shot up beyond anyone's expectations. God, I wish I got in right in that time. The GameStop short squeeze began late in 2020 when a group of investors on the subreddit r slash Wall Street bets uh, began buying up shares of GME stock, primarily as a response to the company's declining fortunes and the short positions taken by the hedge funds like Melvin Capital. This institutional investor bet the GameStop's, GameStop's stock price would fall and all were using complex financial instruments like options to try to make money from the decline. The Wall Street Bets group, however, had a different plan. While buying up shares of GME and refusing to sell, they drove up the stock price, causing short sellers to incur massive losses as they were forced to buy back shares at much higher prices. This created a feedback loop as the rising stock price attracted more individual investors to buy in, further driving up the price and causing even greater losses for the short sellers. The GameStop short squeeze ultimately resulted in billions of dollars in losses for the institutional investors who had bet against the company, while the individual investors who had organized the squeeze made substantial profits. I hate Reddit. We all do. The Death of Wall Street the United States is plunging into a deep crisis, with the effects of which are being felt around the world in recent months. The country is facing an acute political crisis, with rising political violence and a sharply polarized society. An intensified wave of coronavirus infections only exacerbated the situation, causing massive job losses and overburdening the healthcare system, which is pretty normal. Ah, against this backdrop, living standards have fallen precipitously. The country's economy was paralyzed, imports and exports fell sharply, and prices for essential goods soared. The financial sector was not ready for this development. U.S. banks still imposed restrictions on withdrawal, setting a critical liquidity shortage. This decision oh, oh, caused a wave of panic among the population, which led to a massive sell-off of assets and transfer of savings into cash. Uh, the U.S. financial markets collapsed, with which immediately affected the economies of other nations. The world economy was on the verge of collapse. Stock indexes are falling rapidly. Currencies are de depreciating. Political instability in the United States only exacerbates the global crisis, which is already being called one of the most destructive in modern history. The world on the brink of collapse. We just got rid of all the penalties for consumer goods factors. Bro. Come on. But I do see. What is this? I'm gonna deploy a vaccine in Pennsylvania? Mm hmm. Just in case. 
So we can't even build. I mean, we got that 30%. Now we're 94%. We still can't build anything. Well, we're no longer to the moon, at least. We'll see what happens. Empower the government, you know. We must do anything to curb the rise of radicalism and partisanship in politics, even by questionable means. Executive Order 14066. Huh. Oh. Well, I guess we don't get that one. Yeah. We'll see. I don't know. It's my first campaign doing it, so. Trading the economy. Ooh, inflation's not too bad, at least. I guess we do this one. Reconcile our Republicans. And store guns. Promise progress. This would be nice. Norfolk, Cincinnati, Montgomery, Cleveland. Oh, well, promise progress, I guess. Press propaganda. 2% more legitimacy. We lose legitimacy. Add 14 days to the Civil War. 14 days. Expand influence here. At least 10% legitimacy. Since influence in Illinois, Orangeboro, St. Clair, and Cook. We'll go with that one. Uh, address the infrastructure. Well, the Build Back Better plan will incorporate the whole of the United States. First benefit those areas that will be the most used to us first. That's right. That's right, Joe Biden. That's right. And then we're going to buy a couple more masks. Even though I do want to expand influence in Illinois. Maybe we should have taken that one. 42,000 masks. Um, wait, that's a lot of masks. 84,000. Holy cow. Hold a conference. Haitian government overthrown. Need so many masks. Promise progress. Address infrastructure problems. Try. Right. Yeah, maybe we should stop buying masks. Press propaganda. Inevitable civil war. I do want to expand influence in Illinois, but I oh, we can't really get this at this point. West Virginia, Carolinas. Well, anything gives more political power, more legitimacy. Not really, no. More legitimacy, approval, compromise with the Republicans. Minimize militias. Our militias are wreaking havoc into many local communities and neighborhoods. This issue must be dealt with, with by any means necessary, basically. Yeah. Uh, that's what a legitimacy points do. Okay, we'll see what it does. Oh, I guess Indiana. Yeah, I guess you're technically my state. So, oh, three military factories. Look at that. We actually build. Oh, you have more military factories. Motorized then. Huh. I apologize. For, I mean, I mean, I apologize. You know, I read pretty fast. I'm, I'm a person that reads very, things very, very quickly. But, wow, this is really bad. I can't even build anything, anyways. Um, it's just because I want to get through this reading so we can get to the Civil War and see what it's like, and because I've never done it before. So, a little press propaganda. Plan for the worst, expand the CDC. Oh, look at that. At least we're building back better. Supposedly. That thing's gonna fall apart on September 1st, or September. Don't worry about the debt. Oi. The army ceases communications. Well. Yeah. That'd be nice. Cook County. That's a lot of Cook. There's Chicago itself. Henry, other St. Clair, Illinois itself. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Vandenberg, Marion. Just Indiana, Indiana. Minimalized militias. And here we go. The, oh. Uh, Biden pressed a dossier in Austin's from hand. His face was stern. The Rosalind dust was like a rift between them. The National Guard in Virginia needs to tie up in Richmond. Northam said he's worried about the Capitol. This stinks, Lloyd. The Secretary of Defense nodded as by and breathed. What about Barksdale? They better get their orders. Secretary Austin crossed his hands on the table, his gaze fixed on the President. We have no response from the Commander. 
Biden turned, his jaw muscles tightening. A furious gaze filled a conviction he only had felt since the massacres in Bosnia. Don't BS me, Lloyd. Lloyd Austin fixed his glasses. Finally managed to look away from the commander-in-chief, swept building at his temples. Hands closely predicted the calamity that would ensue once a spark landed on the powder keg. There's no other way to go about this, Biden needed to know. Fort Benning, Fort Knox, and Fort Dix have all been silenced since the state of emergency was declared. We received reports from the mobilizing only at 0400. They didn't cross the Potomac. A pager went off in the hallway outside. God help us, this is it. Oh, give us a second here. Happy October. Oh, maybe the things will fall apart in October. Happy 2021, everybody. Oh, I forgot to get Maurice's speech. My bad. Oh, and here we go, I think. Oh, we lost. But we won. But I think America lost. American constitutional government. How would they have control of Minneapolis? Welcome to a divided America. In New York, yep, state of Maine, Sons of Liberty, all sorts of good old things here. Who the crap are you? Association of the Freed, Albany, oh, that guy. West, Western mass holes, normal mass holes. Patriot Front, Long Island, you, oh, it's us. Southern Federal Command. Charlotte, Redneck Revolt. Uh huh. State of South Carolina, Army of God. State of Georgia. There's a Southern Federal Command, yeah. Little White, Little Knights of the KKK. MS 13 Florida would be a giant freaking mess. Zoe Pound? What the heck is Zoe Pound? Zoe Pound? Mafia State, Audenbachan Division, Tampa. You know, I'll be honest, I don't know where any city is in Florida. I'm like, Miami's down here. I know Miami, maybe. I know Tampa's over here, Orlando's over here, Jacksonville's pretty north, Tallahassee's up here, Pensacola, it's like a military base. Where's Sarasota? There's sort of Myers. Huh. Anyways, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, League of the South, goes Donald Trump's Texas, all sorts of different Texas stuff here and there. Texas National Movement. Yeah, this is just freaking wild. All right, so anyways, so what do we got here? Secure the capital. It will only be the most tragic event of our nation's history. The unthinkable has become reality. For the first time in 150 years, the American continent has been split alight. With brother against brother, once more, as fighting has begun between a legitimate government and the pretender to our West. While virtually everyone had wished that things would have been different, we cannot afford to falter in the face of a threat to our long democratic tradition. If we are to weather the storm before us, we must secure our nation's sacred capital, ensuring that Washington, D.C. is safe from all immediate and possible threats, allowing an interim government to operate unhindered in the dark time. Operation Mockingbird commences. Since the Union of America's establishment, we have encountered persistent challenges posed by insurgents who consider themselves loyal to the regime's centered endeavor. At least hostile elements are allowed to persist unchecked. The potential consequences could cascade into a dangerous domino effect, rallying more supporters to the causes a scenario that imperils the stability of our government. Therefore, to safeguard our nation and democratic principles, we are initiating Operation Mockingbird effective immediately. Operation Mockingbird stands as a conjoint effort, marshaling the, uh, the resources and expertise of the FBI alongside various other contracted partners. Its primary objective is to systematically dismantle and neutralize the various insurgent groups operating within the Washington area. While the majority of Washington, D.C. is under control, the presence of these entrenched Trumpist cells poses a significant ongoing threat to the integrity of our governance. Their precise intentions and strategies remain unknown, yet their overall efforts to subvert our national security demand decisive action. These groups are not only a threat to our immediate safety, but also symbolic of a larger orchestrated effect or effort by the previous administration and their allies to destabilize the nation. Their pawns in a broader scheme orchestrated by Trump and his loyalists intend to undermine the Union of America and its leadership. Rest assured, those who conspire against the interests of our nation will be identified, apprehended, and brought to justice swiftly and decisively. Operation Mockingbird represents our unwavering commitment to uphold the rule of law and protect the sanctity of our democratic institutions from internal threats, the first step in destroying Trump's regime. All right, so what do we got here? Got a lot of volunteer militia. God, I hate militia, but they're needed. They're needed quite badly. So, we have, do we have our own faction, or do we have some command? So, Washington government versus Denver government. Interesting that we're at, over there. Garrisons. 
Do you have like, what is that? Mil oh, military police. I'll be honest, I don't know what to make. National Guard units? Infantry brigades? Um, let's go with National Guard units maybe? And then we want to make sure, definitely have some armor. Infantry. Recon tanks. self propelled artillery. It's okay. Infantry divisions. 50 combat with. Holy crap, that's a lot. Oh, this infantry division. Yeah. Striker brigade. This is not too bad. Self propelled APCs, light tanks. Armored brigade. Recon. Self propelled main battle tank. That's not bad overall. It's pretty decent for armored. Armored division, though. Holy crap. We don't have the industry for something like this. Um, in all honesty, this is probably the best bang for our buck. You got APCs, you got a recon tank, which is light armor, basically. Um, motorized, self-propelled, so. As much as I'd like this one. We got three civvies. Uh, I don't know what to make here. I'm not going to worry about our debt too much. So, probably going to need some fuel. We definitely need some infrastructure. So, we can start building some infrastructure in our center areas here. I'm sure we're going to have a problem with what? West Virginia? Parts of Tennessee, Kentucky, and whatnot. Oh, we have. Oh, we do have Chicago and Milwaukee. Maybe too much. And, yeah, you know what? Build that stuff for now, maybe. Maybe some military factories. I'll put it there first. Alright, so what do we have? We have literally nothing. So we need some guns, we're gonna need some command equipment. Uh, sure, that's fine, whatever. Freight trains, sure, why not? Motorized transports, light mechanized, light Gen 2, light mechanized, modern mechanized, amphibious assault vehicles. Probably not gonna need these, but we'll have them there. Gen 2 utility helicopters, improved artillery. Probably not gonna go with rocket artillery. 30. Yeah. Motorized rocket artillery. I kinda doubt that we need that. We'll do that anyways. Get the man pads going. I'm not sure what these are for. I'm not sure we really need these. We'll grab them anyways. Um, let's see. What's this one? Self propelled basic gun. That's fine. Yeah. And maybe that'll take definitely. Large airframes, B1s, no. Large airframes, no. Warthogs. These two are our. What range? Um, fighters and casts. More range. Transport, attack helicopters. Uh, we don't really need attack helicopters. So. I'm sure we need plenty of guns though. Dockyards, I'm not going to worry too much about our navy. 2020 carriers, hull. 2000s carrier hull, missile cruiser, 2024 corvettes. I'm not going to worry about too much of this. Save the game. Let's see. What I would like to happen is us fighting in. Here, Michigan would be nice. Instead of Michigan, huh? Like a chaos battle for America. Saigon, overwhelming factionalism. So, and what do we have here? Special forces, uh, combat teams, air assault. You guys are gonna be like the main forces. You are all gonna have to do something here and hold the line. Mattis, of course, would be here. Mark Miley. Mm, Lloyd Austin. I'm assuming we don't need a guard in most of North Carolina. They can fight that for themselves. You guys are gonna be on the entire front here. Hmm. We need infantry leaders. 
Uh, who's got defense? Max Trenchment, Schneider, it's fine. Uh, Paul, sure. This is probably not going to go very well for us, but it's alright. There you go. Something like that. And then... Tobo, I guess, and more of you guys. There you go. That's fine. Because we need some people up here, too. No, you know what? You go here. You. Can help us defend here. I really don't know which way is going to be the best route to do any of this stuff. And we're going to be lacking pretty hard in terms of units. I hate that they're politically connected, so I'm going to go with you. This is the plan. So we're going to guard here if we can. Guard through here. Let them deal with whatever they need here. We're going to have one group go up to Michigan. And one group go to New England. The plan is to encircle and destroy. We'll try to guard off Chicago and whatnot. You guys are going to just focus on this group here. And just blitz into Buffalo if you possibly can. Uh, before we forget, we do have... Oh my god. Tons of planes. You know, we're just going to redeploy everybody. It's probably a bad idea, but at this point, I don't care. What do we got? Attack helicopter spiders, cast. Mm-hmm. There we go. So two go here. One, two go here. Here, go there. Well, this is all evened out in the end. A little bit more. So there's that. Uh, we're probably going to make attack helicopters. Place these things. Range. That's fine. And then. Not enough garrisons. So I never saw it. Local autonomy is nice. We have no navy, but that's okay. I don't know how things are going to work or react, so. Do we at least have one division per tile? Oh man, we're going to be struggling here a lot, aren't we? Or, I said, you guys here. We can also show up you against here too. It really looks like we're gonna need extra help here. Oh yeah. You know what? Screw this side. You guys are gonna do something like this. If you can push and defend through Michigan, I'll be happy. I could be completely wrong about all of this though. So secure the cap. So what's the focus tree like? Me with the corporations. Unification deal. Blow the whistle. Hmm. Hand on her shoulder. Nationalize with the war effort. Ah, oh, it's constitutional. Negotiate with the progressives. Constitutional provisions. Oh. Form the National Unity Coalition. Maintain constitutionalism. Deal with the establishment. Pass the Equality Act. Increase corporate taxes. Revisit the education system. Oh, maybe we'll go with that one. Let's see. Reunify the nation. Fighting for democracy. Division attack. It's not bad. Huh. Hmm, it's probably a good one to go this way. Reunify the nation, which we couldn't do. Trust in the high command. Defenders of democracy. Versus resolve the recruitment crisis. Fuel the meek render. Well, we'll probably do it. The government's splitting in two. Our newly restructured union government is 
have been fortunate enough to maintain the loyalty of many of America's top military leaders, in addition to a sizable portion of the federal army. Whilst it is undoubtedly a great advantage in her desire to rescue a nation's democracy from peril, it has come with its fair share of issues. Namely, much of the army's rank and file have become uncooperative out of personal politics, causing disorganization and disloyalty among the troops. In addition, the issue of army restructuring and doctrinal debate sprung up amongst the general staff as well as Congress, primarily regarding whether the conventional approach or alternative of formations would be more effective in this unprecedented period. These questions will have to eventually be answered, preferably sooner rather than later, if we're ever picking victory against the traitors in Denver and elsewhere. Alright, well, I'm not sure. Utilize online propaganda. Crack down draft dodgers versus shock and awe. Fuel the meat grinder. Well, if we're going to go with maybe a progressive route, you get much more progressive influence. Trust in the high command. Blitz for the heartland. Overclock for arms production. Discourage anti Americanism. Encourage liberal war hawks. Hmm. Incorporate new recruits. Allied assistance. Uphold NATO doctrine. Practice subversive warfare. Full spectrum operations. Rural acquisition of civilian firearms. Extend the supply network. Politicize the army. Which we don't want. Military society. Which we don't want either. Caution over land, national female service, which we do probably want. We can do it. That's right. We kill our women too. Division speed, more breakthrough. Operation Mirage. Finish a job. I'll finish a fight. Interesting. Oh, which, which way to go? I'll, I'll look at that a little bit more. Demolish gorilla. Neutrality is complicity. 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 Expand the FBI. Engage NSA. Crush partisans. Crush rebels. Expand the CIA. Well, we still don't have a lot to do here. When things are kicking off. American constitutional government. Crackdown on Denver. Oh, what do we have here? Uncooperative military. We've got an inefficient economy. Maintained liberties, for now. Uh, oh. Sounds like exploding, too. Hello? Rebels fuse it back down. Oh. Low civilian unrest. Anti-government uprising will occur with less than 20% stability. Trump's military-backed governor government in Denver has sent us a request to peacefully hand him and as well as power in exchange to put down their arms and cease the rebellion. And if we refuse, the hostility would begin. Their requests <clears throat> uh, only gives us two options we can accept as we would allow them to com have complete power over us. Thus, of course, we refused. Uh, since they all received a response, fighting began to cross our lines. But so far, our military is doing well thanks to our superior command and the rebels' reliance on militias. We must fight for democracy. So what is this one? Corporate influence. Too much corporate influence is uh, will cause a corporate coup. It could be removed by completing a hand on a shorter national war effort. Air Force domination, oil crisis. We still have an oil crisis. Battle for America, Congress of America. When all congressional factions of at least 60% support, public trust will go by only too weakly. We need when below 40% public trust, we lose it. When at 95% surrender limit, the public trust goes down by 0.2. So what do we have here? Test masses, united democracy, <clears throat> liberty or death, upholding expectations. So, well, we're in the war. Holy crap. Congress refuses diplomacy. Uh, <coughs> and perhaps what would be seen as the most tragic event of the 21st century, the two governments in Denver and D.C. have refused to engage in diplomatic talks over in order to reach a peaceful conclusion to the crisis that shook the United States after weeks of unsuccessful negotiations. Well, both Trump and Biden respectively announced that they were the legitimate leader of the country, sporadic fighting between militias broken out along the temporary ceasefire line along the Indiana-Illinois border. Fire can be seen rising from the high rises of Chicago's Trump's militia for fire, round after round, uh, into an attempt to capture this border city as Biden militias advance into the town of Danville, Illinois. And Denver, reportings have said how unmarked back vans have been taking anti-war activists off the streets, while pro-Trump protests in the suburbs of Louisville have been forcibly dispersed by the federal army. While the Trump government is in significant difficulty maintaining order in liberal cities, with riots still breaking out, Biden's de facto control does not extend outside of highways and cities. With underground militia having already begun arming themselves and ambushing army convoys, and households across the U.S., families watching horrors of the very fabric of American society is torn apart. As brother arms himself against brother, it is undeniable that the second American Civil War has truly begun. Brother and brother against once more. Many war declarations pop-ups will appear. Please hold and close them rapidly. Oh, and there we go. A house divided. 
So I'm going to play around with this just a little bit. Um, oh, the Brits. Yeah, of course we do. Hmm. I guess give them a day first. Um, I want to make sure that we can actually win here and whatnot. So we'll see what happens. Oh, we might shift some armed uh, combos around. I just want to see when these guys will explode out against us. Because, you know, we do need to guard ourselves pretty pretty tensely. Uh, but, with that being said, I can go end it there. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please consider, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow as uh, we'll do the best against Donald Trump. Thanks for watching, and have a great Sleepy Joe rest of your day.